Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at this 100 watt briefcase style folding solar panel from XTAR called the SP100. The SP100 retails for $269 and with that you get an integrated 9 foot 8 millimeter cable as well as a really high quality MC4 adapter. They also offer bundles where you can choose additional adapters, USB output, or extension cables only if you need them, otherwise it keeps the cost of the core panel down. Amazon has this on sale for $30 off right now, but for even better prices, check out my links in the description. There's some special savings just for my viewers. Now XTAR is basically known for their battery chargers and flashlights, and they're just getting into the solar game right now. But I saw this and I thought it was a really interesting panel that I did want to review because it looked quite a bit like the Jackery, but better quality. Now they do offer a two year warranty with a one year replacement and they also offer lifetime support. So I am curious how this goes. Let me know in the comments if you bought this panel and what your experience has been. The bifold briefcase design is one of my favorites because it makes setup super fast and I found the panel to be nicely rigid and really easy to angle. Now, cheaper folding panels use cardboard and fabric for their structure, so they're really floppy and hard to prop up, but this is super stiff. The handle designs are very comfortable because of the rounded edges, and they're made of this really nice, dense plastic. Internal magnets keep the panel folded with a satisfying snap. The panel only weighs 9.7 pounds, or 4.4 kilograms, and that's 16 pounds lighter than my Goal Zero Boulder 100 glass panel. Glass sure is heavy. There are a pair of really rigid adjustable kickstands built into the case, and those can be used to position the panel at 25, 35, and 45 degree angles, so it's really nice to have that flexibility. I found these worked really well. They're very strong, and they did a good job of keeping the panel really well aligned and overall this thing didn't feel floppy at all, which is usually one of my major complaints with a flexible folding panel like this. The SP100 has premium monocrystalline sun power cells that are rated at a really impressive 23% efficiency and a lifespan of 10 years. They use a really rugged ETFE laminated surface that should avoid the delaminating and low efficiency issues that plagued earlier flexible panels. These are really similar to the TP or top solar panels that I've reviewed in the past. And honestly, I would stick with only this kind of panel if you want a decent lifespan and good efficiency. This panel is designed to charge pretty much every popular brand of 12 volt power stations. And it has overcharge, overcurrent and voltage, temperature and short circuit protection. And there's a large water resistant pouch built into the side with a high quality zipper that holds all the accessories and protects the charging cable. The built-in 9-foot cable uses heavy-duty 14-gauge wire and has an 8mm tip called a DC7909. That's a pretty standard size that is useful for the smaller Blue Eddies as well as Jackery units. Now note that Goal Zero also does use an 8mm input, but theirs is longer and has a gasket on it, so you're going to need to get an adapter if you want to use this directly with Goal Zero. They also include a smaller DC5525 adapter that makes it compatible with Rockpals and some other brands. Now, as with all folding panels, the cable is built into the case, so if it fails for some reason, well, you're in trouble. But the connectors do feel quite strong in this, and I do like the overall simplicity of the design. They also include an MC4 connector, which I really appreciate because that's my preferred way to connect this now to my EcoFlow and Blue Eddy units. XTAR also sent along a few accessories. So this is the optional 10 foot extension cable, which is just the same quality as the primary cable. And they also sent along this parallel cable that has two eight millimeter inputs, and that sums it in parallel into an Anderson power pole, which is quite nice. They also offer this optional EU4S breakout box with four USB ports. Now every flexible panel I've ever tested with USB only had a pair of low power USB-A ports and this is much better because it has two 12 watt USB-A ports, another 18 watt USB-A port with quick charge 3.0 and best of all it has a 45 watt USB-C with power delivery. 
I like that this is a separate unit rather than baking it into the panel's junction box. It's smart because there's fewer electronics exposed to the weather that can fail. It also means that if you only want to use this to charge a big power station, you can save yourself $30 and just skip the USB outputs. Now let's talk about performance. First of all, this is designed for 12 volt power stations. It does have a 24 volt output, which is much closer to a typical glass panel. And I measured 22.45 volts open circuit. And to test it, I hooked this up to my Blue Eddy EB150 through the eight millimeter plug. Check its output. Now on this day, it was a little bit overcast, but mostly sunny. And what I did for testing is I just slowly angled this up to vertical and then back down again to see how much power I could get out of this panel. And I gotta say, I was really blown away because you'll see as I angle it on the way back down in a few seconds, I got 110 watts out of this thing. So that's pretty amazing considering that this was a slightly hazy day in December in New England. Now, whenever I test a solar panel, honestly, if I get about 80% of its rated output, I'm pretty happy you never ever get the full rated power of a solar panel. It just doesn't happen. And when you find a panel like this that gives you basically 110% of its rated output, well, it's pretty special. And I'm really impressed that this was able to pull it off. Now I find the only way to understand the performance of a solar panel is to directly compare it to other styles and brands in the same conditions at the same time. To do that, I set up a wide variety of panels in full sun, and I also simulated partial shade to compare their relative output. For simplicity, I tested these flat, which means we're not gonna get the full output as if we had angled them, but I just care about relative performance in this test. So in the lineup, we have a TP Solar glass panel, a TP Solar flexible panel, a Rich Solar SIGS panel, two different flavors of TP Solar folding panels that I've reviewed in the past, the X-Star briefcase panel, and finally we have a premium Rock Pals folding panel to round this out. In full sun at high noon, the X-Star panel produced 88 watts lying perfectly flat. Now that was 5% more than the 83 watts I got from the glass panel. In my mind, the glass panel is sort of the gold standard. It also produced 12% more power than the Rich Solar SIGS panel, a whopping 23% more power than the TP Solar folding panels. The Rock Pals folding panel produced 86% of its rating, only 2% shy of the X-Star. As one final test, I wanted to see how well each of these panels would handle being shaded. Now to do that, I just dropped this four inch cap on the panel and measured the output. And I'm just noting here how much each of these panels produced and how much that was different from the original output when it was unobstructed. And in all cases, the X-Star came out on top in this test. It had the highest output and the only one that was even close to it was the Rock Pals. So I gotta admit, when I first saw this X-Star panel, the thing that popped in my mind is, gee, this sure looks a lot like the Jackery Solar Saga 100. And yes, it is very heavily inspired by that design, but I would say overall, it improves every element of that panel significantly, and it's the same price or cheaper. Now, I don't own this Jackery panel, but luckily there are lots of reviews out on the web, and one of my favorite reviewers, Hobotech, actually had the version two and version three of this, and he was testing it and he hooked it up and he got 110 watts. And I was like, wow, okay, these perform the same. And then I realized in the video that was with two of these Jackery panels hooked in parallel. When you measure each one individually, he was only getting about 60 watts. So the Jackery panel gives you about 60 watts properly angled and this XR will give you 110 watts. So I would say the XR is much better and I would never consider getting this Jackery panel for $300. All right, so let's wrap this one up. So flexible solar panels, main benefit is they're lightweight, rugged, and portable. They are usually more expensive than a glass panel and tend to have lower output, shorter lifespans, 
and can't be left out in the wind or rain. The XSTAR SP100 is one of the most impressive folding panels I've used because it overcomes many of these disadvantages. Yeah, it's still pretty expensive compared to a generic 100 watt glass panel, but it has excellent build quality, output that exceeds its rating, and is super rugged while still being lightweight. The kickstands and the overall rigidity make it easy to angle into the sun and to know it will stay in place, even if it's windy. Best of all, it has an IP65 rating, which means it's dustproof and can handle jets of water without any issues. I'd normally never leave a portable panel out in the weather because they tend to have fabric enclosures and the junction box can easily get damaged in the rain. I left this out for a few days in the weather and it was no worse for the wear. So overall, I think this is a fantastic panel. It comes highly recommended. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my reviews, please consider giving this a thumbs up and subscribing. Till next time, thanks for watching.